The natural world is all around us. As animal lovers, we are well aware of this. And as reptile lovers, we are especially adept at seeing the beauty in everything. Not just the soft and cuddly, but also the rough and scaly. Becoming a caretaker for these animals is a passion for most, as well as a huge responsibility. And for those of us in the know, one place has always been there to help ensure that we provide the best quality of life possible. So I got a real treat for you guys. I'm very excited because I was invited out to San Luis Obispo, California to see the inner workings of ZooMed. Very excited because as you're gonna find out, they're much more than just a reptile supply company. They are reptile nuts. So let's get in there and see what they have to show us. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Ashley, what's going on? Hey. Pretty psyched here. Good to see you. We'll get a hug. Thank you. Ah, we actually, of we go way back. Ashley actually came over and visited Camp Kennan a few months back with Eric, one of your reps from South Florida. Right. But what was really cool is I got the invite here, so I wanted to bring all of you with me to see the inner workings of Zoo Med Laboratory. So what air, where are we right now? What, well, where we're are we? in the animal room, or we call it the show room, because okay. we have another animal room as well. Oh, I can't and wait to see that. <laughs> this is uh, just kind of where we keep part of our collection. We use a lot of our products in here. Okay. Work on customer service. This is like the laboratory, you know, the, the living laboratory. Well, yeah. Well, the first thing that's catching my eye is this tank. I mean, this is insane. And this is Jim, right? Yes. Excellent. Jim Jim is Mr. Ashley. I guess they're a duo. You guys are a team, huh? We sure are. Well, what we're looking at right now uh, is an antique uh, aquarium. Yeah. Which is beautiful. And Gary, the owner, is really into these. Yes, yeah. He has a huge collection of different antique and vintage aquariums, and he loves antique uh, pet supplies of, of all kinds, really. So cool. Um, yeah, it's really fascinating. This one in particular was made uh, for the Matson Navigation Company and has been around since like 1918. It's about 500 gallons, has thousands of man hours put into restoring it. Wow. And yeah, we just, we really enjoy having it here. And now it's neat. It's got little turtles and lizards on it too. That's killer. Here's the thing, I keep so many animals outdoors in South Florida, here in Central California, a little bit more difficult to do that because of the extremes of temperature. Right, and, and we humidity. don't have the humidity. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of animals that we really can't keep So what you can time. help me out with, um, and some of the viewers are always asking me about like UVB lighting, like I see this bearded dragon is hanging out. You know, how do you guys know when UVB is actually being effective? Like, do you have any kind of way to measure it or sure, something absolutely. like that? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we test, we have all of our products tested um, before they arrive here, and we use uh, different kinds of UVB meters, UVI radiometers, UVA meters, okay. um, everything that we can, and we make sure that, that it's within a safe level before we apply it to the animal, and then when we put it on a um, one of our animals, we just kind of watch for their reaction, because sometimes, you know, they may be reacting differently than we really expected them to, so um, yeah, with this here, we have uh, a new light on this bearded dragon, and we keep a UVI meter and a UVB meter right nearby. All right, yeah. here they are. And so that we can test these um, regularly and observe different behaviors, you know, that the animal may be doing, where she's spending her time, um, if gotcha. she's basking, if she's staying away from the light, if she's okay. eating regularly, all of those things. Very so cool. So this we is like to have it right here where we're spending our time so that we can see it um, all the time. Because okay, so let's face it, their, their products are actually for the health of the animals, to make their anim the animal's life more enriched and better in a captive um, setting. So this is really cool. It's amazing to see this. I'm kind of geeking out a little bit because, you know, what I love about traveling around and doing the show and meeting different, you know, people within the hobby uh, is, is really about learning you know and you made a we talked here's a news flash guy this isn't the first time <laughs> we actually hung out okay um but you had a really cool term and what was it happy accidents what kind of what was uh, it called 
accidental, accidental learning. learning. <laughs> yes, I think we all accidentally learn from time to time with our animals. If we Absolutely. pay attention to them, you know, they're going to yeah. teach us something. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. I mean, you see some beautiful animals over here, and this this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is a really neat animal. This is um, an emerald tree skink from the Solomon Islands, no and uh, they're. You know, they can be a, kind of quick, but they're not as flighty as you'd kind of expect them to be. Really? The, looking the way that they do. They're really uh, curious, and so they like to come up to the front of the habitat. And if you open that door, he'll probably just Is it cool? climb out on your hand. Yeah, you don't sure. mind? All right. Go for it. Oh, awesome, man. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I mean, this is going to be re real reality. Uh, all right, let's see. Hey, buddy. Are you in a good mood? Come here. Do you want to come out? Do you want to come out? He's looking to see if I have food. Yeah. Yeah, usually, well, yeah, he's pretty tolerant. I'm going to, do you mind if I pull no, it up? No, go for it. All yeah. right, let's see, because this is a really cool, this is a cool small species here. Up, a little bit flighty. Let's be gentle. All right, all right. All right. All right. Well, you know what? I don't want to stress it out too much. But there, that's pretty cool, man. Come on over here so you can really get a good look. It's, it's just an awesome little animal. But I love the curiosity in this guy. You know, when you keep animals, you want to see that kind of interaction. And it's right. obvious that this animal is acclimated. I hope I didn't upset you. I got a little, okay. I got a little, a little overzealous. Sorry, dude. We'll close this and let this dude do its thing. But that's awesome, man. I, I have the other thing, and I want to. Hey, Jim, where are you at, man? Oh, I think he's on the phone with a customer. Oh, okay. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> It's also actually a working business, and what's cool is, you know, if you call ZooMed, you'll be talking to either Jen over there, who's on the phone, or Jim, as we met him earlier, Ashley's other half, and, you know, it's really or neat, me. or you, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so you're fielding questions, not only about the product, but about animals as well, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, you know, you might get a disgruntled uh, person on the phone, and they don't realize you're talking to them from inside an animal room. Does it diffuse situations when they figure out that you're animal people yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell people all the time, like, oh, hang on, let me just put this turtle down and wash my hands so I can go open up, you know, my computer yeah. and, and see what it is that I can do for you. Um, we, we handle the animals all the time. We're using the products all the time. So when you call with a question about it, we're not telling you what we know because somebody told us that. or we Right, you're not reading book. a script. Right, exactly. Yeah. We're doing it because we have fed those animals three times a week or four times a week, and we are using the products all the time. What I love, though, and, you know, Jim's on the phone, so he's a little busy right now. But what's <laughs> cool is Jim does all of kind of the, the arranging of the furniture and, and kind of habitat creation. I love it. Uh, this is, again, guys, you know when I'm talking on the show, and I always talk about naturalistic enclosures. If you can't do something outside, they really have some cool products. Like, this is your new skyscraper aquarium yeah, or terrarium. terrarium. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's for an arboreal species, and it's got, you know, vertical space. But look at the creativity here. Uh, this is really spectacular. And what animal is Those living in it? Those are giant small wood animals. Oh, look at this. So, but just look at the what you can do in an indoor terrarium. Uh, you know, the cork bark, planting. These are real... Real mm -hmm. bromeliads and, and yeah, bird nest ferns. Oh my gosh, this is incredible! And here is, here it is, right here. And he's gonna—he's not happy. See, he's gonna show me, and I'm gonna back up so I allow him to know that his threat display worked, and he has that confidence every man and human being should <laughs> have. Uh, he's a reptile, though. You know what I'm talking about, right? Get confidence, kids. Stay strong. That's all you got to do. Stick up to a bully like me. <laughs> Just put your dewlap down and you'll be all right. So let's see. Where are we headed to now? I want to see everything I can. Oh, there's lots to see. There is lots to see here. Uh, so these are kind of cool. These good. are Australian are, lungfish. There was one. And of course know. they're going to hide right now. Of course. They're, on, they're camera shy. <laughs> Yeah. But lungfish, so these are a very primitive fish yes. um, that are almost, I mean, in some ways the lungfish are precursors to the amphibians, right? Yeah, absolutely, because they act, they're called a lungfish because they actually have a lung. Okay. And this one in particular has one lung where some of the, the Africans um, and South Americans actually have a pair of lungs. But the Australian lungfish has one single lung. Okay. Um, they have these bony uh, plates, like scales, right. on their body. So um, they're kind of reptilian in, right. in appearance. Um, and they can live through some pretty bad drought situations. They can dry up, you know, into very small mud puddles and breathe atmospheric air using that lung. Wow. So, um, yeah, they're really fascinating animals. 
there's uh, there's the oldest known fish in captivity uh -huh. is an Australian lungfish named Grandad that okay. lives at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, and he has been there. He was imported for the World's Fair in 1933 or 1935. Okay. And he's been there that whole time, and he's still there. He's huge. He's like 90 pounds. He's My awesome. dad was born in 35. He's 81 years old. He's yeah. still kicking too. <laughs> and uh, but that's that's a pretty old fish. <laughs> I yeah. mean that's that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I love this. I love this. Again, guys, I, I'm I'm geeking out right <laughs> now, man. Because you know when I first started, it was like this. It was you know terrariums and how can I make how can I bring the outside in? Sure. Okay. Because so many people don't understand uh, or they aren't thinking, you know, creatively enough. With the, what, with the space they have and the materials available for them, and you guys make everything. Right. Everything. So if you're living up north or anywhere and you want to do something on the inside, like look at this. So you have, you know, that's cork bark, right? Uh huh. So cork yep. bark and then your excavator sand, mm -hmm. which is this really cool product that you moisten and then you can mold it. And here's what's sick um, this is all excavator sand. I'm going to open this. We'll hopefully yeah. not scare these guys. Um, but Basically, guys, you can make make this. Look at this. They sell this in bags. You buy a few bags. You can mold it. If you have a desert species that likes to climb, likes kind of rock formations, you can create your own habitat for them. And I this is pretty exciting because now it makes me want to keep, you know, like a species of lizard like this, and it really enhances, you know, your space, you know? Sure, and theirs as well, because now there's levels in this terrarium, you know, that has an 18 by 18 inch yep. footprint, but there's all of this space that they can use now. Yeah. They can do natural behaviors like digging, it helps wear down their toenails, they can climb. Um, Thermoregulate, they want to get closer, they climb up, they want to, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. you know, it so really allows nice. them to perform a lot of natural behaviors and you know, I don't think that there's much of a better way to learn about the animal that you're having than allowing it to do that, you know? That's the other thing that's really impressive to me about ZooMed. They are so passionate about education and they want people to learn about these animals because if you learn about the animals, the animals do better in captivity. These are all passionate animal lovers. I mean, that's the bottom line and they're making these products for you and I'm my something's caught my eye here. I don't this is a wait, this is a Cuban false chameleon. We're gonna we're gonna check this out. Guys, check this out. And look at this habitat. So, you know, Ashley, to be truthful, you know, was filling me in about this animal. And you know, talk to me a little bit about this and why is this a really cool species to work with in captivity? This is actually one of my favorite lizards that we have. Um, it's, it's more related to an anole, okay. but we often call anoles New World Chameleons. Right. They have some other chameleon-like properties though. Their eyes can move independently. They can look different directions, just like an Old World Chameleon. Um, they, uh, they're, they're very slow, this particular species, which most anoles are really flighty and right. you don't really want to deal with handling them. But, uh, but these animals, they, they rest. And I actually read a study that said that um, people that were watching them in the wild saw that they were still for 65% of their time. So they spent really? a lot of time just hanging out. They're ambush predators and they specialize on snails. Which Ooh, is snails? Really, yeah. Um, wow, which so I terrestrial really snails. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we feed them on a diet here that consists of um, crickets that are dusted and uh, the canned Zumed snails. Right. We kind of chop them up a little bit. They'll take them from tongs or they'll eat them out of a dish. Okay. Um, they're they're polite. They're they're, they're poli cultured chameleons. Uh, exactly. False chameleons. That is. But they'll eat out of a dish. Look at that. No. And and you know it is. It's just a cool animal. It's hanging out. Do very well in captivity because they don't require a lot of space because they wait for their food to come across their path. So this enclosure is perfect for them. And it looks like there is a pair. Mm -hmm. And these have reproduced. Yes. Yeah, we have that's like 13 awesome. offspring from them. Wow. wow, that's really cool. And that's yeah. the sign of a happy animal. If the animal is thriving and reproducing, yeah, you're absolutely. reproducing too, so you must be happy in captivity. I am, I fantastic. am. <laughs> that's good. That's fantastic. <laughs> a little inside information. <laughs> yeah, the guys at the turtle conference were making fun and saying, oh, like, yeah? oh there's going to be a CB Ashley oh, and F1. Oh, my captive bred F1. Oh, yeah. And here, finally, Jim, come on in, man. I would love to talk to you. Uh, you know, congratulations on the successful breeding. But um, what I really want to talk about, mate, <laughs> is uh, the fact that, you know, you really get into the, uh, the, the enclosures here, you know, and I'm, I'm blown away by this. This is a personal passion of mine. So, 
you know, talk to me a little bit about what drove you, you know, what, what are you looking for when you create these? Um, I, I grew up doing all kinds of hobbies, doing model building, and I just take everything I've learned from all the different things I do and uh, make it work. Yeah. You know, just Believe it or not, guys, you know, um, I, I learned backwards. My dad was trying to teach me about pipes and all these things, and I was too busy riding bikes, but now as an adult playing with PVC, waterfalls, building enclosures, you know, all of that, you did plumbing work as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah so I, it I, all it all comes into play now when you're talking about creating habitats for animals. I, I love what you're doing in here, man. It's just pretty inspiring, and it now makes me want to kind of build an indoor terrarium, which is not good for my girlfriend because <laughs> I'm obsessive. This is really cool, man. And there's plenty more for us to see here at Zoom Ed, but right now, why don't we wrap it? Uh, this is the first of a few episodes we're gonna be coming to you from Zoom Ed Laboratories here somewhere in Central California. Actually, you can look it up. We're in San Luis Obispo. <laughs> right, it's not that, it's not that top it's secret. It's not a secret. But there are rooms that I'm not allowed in, so I wanna peek in there, man. Of course. All right, man. We'll see you guys soon.